Chad Sarrow, and this is a What I'm Thinking debrief for the week of August 25th, 2013. In a previous debrief, I discussed the topic of stock tanks and why you shouldn't play them. This caused a little confusion as it seems to indicate that I meant that you should always fully upgrade every tank before playing them. This isn't particularly realistic, especially with higher tier tanks that may have 100,000 plus in XP upgrade costs. Unless I convert XP with gold, I rarely have that much free XP lying around. So, what is the realistic option in these cases without needing to use loads of gold? Personally, I spend what free XP I do have on the critical modules to make the tank as functional as I can. More often than not, the suspension upgrade is the critical component as a higher carrying capacity will allow you to mount carryover modules from the preceding tank or modules that you unlocked from other tank lines. The alternative option as mentioned in the stock tank PSA debrief is the enhanced suspension equipment. Although the viability of that piece of equipment is questionable at best given the credit cost, the only time it makes sense is during a half-priced equipment sale where you could sell it back at half price after the sale for no loss. Every tank has a different critical upgrade path, so putting a little thought into how the tank functions and what's most important will assist you in your decision making. A scout tank, for example, thrives on mobility, so getting the suspension and engine upgrades would be the most helpful. Most other tanks have bad stock guns, so getting an upgraded weapon mounted is a high priority. A specific example that relates to the upcoming match of the week is the Leopard Prototype A. The tank carries nothing over from its predecessor, the Indian Panzer, and has no upgraded modules from other tank lines. It costs just shy of 152,000 XP to fully upgrade the tank. That's about $30 American in gold to do the XP conversion, which is more than I wanted to spend on this tank, especially since I haven't been all that thrilled with the tank line. The good news is the 105mm gun can be mounted without any other upgrades. The bad news is that it costs 62,000 XP, which was more free XP than I had on hand at the time. I decided to upgrade the mobility of the tank first and grind out the gun. I spent all my free XP plus a small XP conversion to get the upgraded suspension and engine. Suffering through a substandard gun is less painful when you have the mobility to flank, and the Leo PTA thrives on mobility since it basically has tinfoil for armor. It does make the tank a bit tricky to play in tier 10 matches as you'll see in the match of the week! The replay they'll be looking at is a solo battle from August 31st on Redshire and my Leopard Prototype A. As noted on the loading screen, this is a standard battle. Reviewing tank composition for this battle reveals the following. This is a tier 10 battle with 8 tier 10s on my team and 7 on the enemy team. My team has 6 tier 9s while the enemy team has 8. Additionally, my team has a tier 8. No arty in this match. While having an extra tier 10 is an advantage for my team, the enemy team has an additional tier 10 tank destroyer and more tier 9s. I don't recognize anyone in this battle. As the match loads in, my initial thought is to take up a sniper position at K5. This location on top of a small rise has multiple soft cover locations as well as being able to back down the hill if you get spotted. It has good lanes of fire on the central hill as well as the one column. Spotting from this location will be difficult given all the tank destroyers on the enemy team that will likely camp the hill. As the battle gets underway, I'm immediately going to start heading west, take the K-line over to my sniper spot at K5. I do have, as mentioned in the introduction, the top engine on this tank, so I'll have no problem getting to my position quickly. Team is distributing pretty much like usual. We will get a lot of backline camping in this battle. Although we do have a number of tanks pushing up the creek. I have now reached my sniper position at K5. I'm going to set up behind this bush here. I was hoping that someone else would take the spotting roll at G5, but no one else has moved up. Someone needs to be at that location to effectively counter and spot the enemies on the hill. I decided to relocate and take up this roll. I do have the camel skill as well as six cents on this tank, so I should be effective in that position. The team is still really distributing to their positions. Got a battle going on at the northeastern gap. As I climb the hill, I should be able to eventually spot them. There's the M103. The trick here is going to be to find a position on the hill where I can actually get my gun to press down on that location. Also, an SU-12255, I line them up and I get a hit. Lining them up again. It's a little tricky between the rocks and the hill here and the buildings. Trying to do a little spotting while I'm up here too. Not really picking up anything on top of the hill yet though. 
take a shot at the ST-1 and I miss. These shots are all 570 meters, which means I am going to miss with this gun, especially with only small parts of these tanks exposed. Miss the second time on the ST-1. Try to line them up again. I get hit on them. Since I am using the 9 centimeter, damage is a little on the low side. Looks like I bounced off the ST-1. Line them up again. Bouncing that time. Get a damaging hit that time. Trying to knock down this ST-1 while he's out in the open. Miss that shot. And our T-110E3 knocks him down. I'm going to maneuver again. See if I can get some more shots on them. And I'm lining up an E-50M. And I get a hit. Take a blind fire. Probably a miss. With no enemies spotted, I'm going to push up the hill a little bit, see if I can spot anything. Nothing spotted. The enemy's likely back at... Oh, I just spotted a T-110E3. I can just see the top of him. I'm lining him up. And I missed. We have a T-54E1 in the field. I got spotted, so I backed down the hill. And our tank destroyers are putting some fire on him. He's disappeared from view. I'm going to maneuver over the rides, use this bush in front of me to try to light him up again. I light up the T-54-1, I line him up and I get a hit. And our JP-100 knocks him down. I'm going to climb back up the hill, see if I can spot the E-3 again. Or get some shots in the northeastern gap. Currently have a one tank lead. Although we haven't really gotten any shots at any of the enemy tier 10s yet outside of the E50M. Trying to line up this M103. Not having a lot of luck. Swaying the cursor back and forth, trying to hope I can get a corner of him. No luck. Gonna climb back up the hill again, see if I can get some spots. Trying to line up the M103 again. I can just see him sort of in and out. He's bouncing back and forth, and I'm just not getting any clear shots. Struggling with this aim here. And just catch enough at the top of his turret to snap a shot off, but I miss. Trying to line him up again. Just see the top of his turret and the back of his turret, but I miss again. This is a little bit frustrating, trying to sweep the cursor back and forth. Miss that shot too. We now have a T-54 pushing up the one line. I will have shots on him from the flank. Miss my first shot. Trying to support our tanks that are up in front of him. And I miss again. Finally get a hit. I let him on fire, but he puts it out immediately. These shots aren't quite as long as the other direction were, but my gun is acting a little spastic. Miss that shot. He's being smart. He's going back and forth, but he gets tracked. Missed my shot anyways. And he's back and back down the hill. I'm trying to line him up again. I get a hit that time. Also have an E-75 spotted to my right. Trying to line up the T-54 again. And he gets knocked down by our E-100. While I won't name and shame the player, someone on my team isn't happy with my spotting on the hill. Since I've played this position on this map multiple times, as well as observed others in this role, I know the price of being too aggressive. The enemy is likely back at D4, so even if I was able to spot them, the tanks back at K5 and K7 won't even be able to see those targets as they would be beyond the draw range of the game engine. Our tanks need to move up in order to make any spotting beyond my current position viable. Scouting beyond your teammates' view range is worthless with the exception of matches that have artillery in them. And I bounce off his back. I've been spotted. There's the E-75. 
JPE gets knocked down by our Foch 155. Take a hit likely from the E75. Get back into cover. This position can be far more dangerous when there's an enemy already in the match as they can hit this side of the hill pretty easily. Climb back up the hill to try to line up the E75. Keeps backing up. Goes beyond the building. I get a hit. Try to line them up again. Get another hit. Back down the hill as I get spotted. Our object 268 has moved up now. So I'll finally have some frontline support. E75 is lit again. I'm going to try to line them up. And I get a hit right as our object 268 knocks him down. With some of our tier 10 tank destroyers moving up, it now makes sense for me to push further as I'll have heavy fire support that can actually shoot at the lit targets. I still need to be careful as there are quite a few big guns still left in the match. Still being cautious, I don't want to run into a mess of tank destroyers, which is basically all the enemy has left except for their E50M. Currently have a 4 tank lead. Trying to use these rocks up on the hill for cover. I have a Foch 155 spot on the one line. He is pointed at us. A little nervous here with that big of a gun pointed in my direction, but our big tank destroyers get some hits on him. I miss. Have an E3 in front of me. Bounce on him. Don't really stand a chance frontally against an E3. I'm going to back up down the hill to get out of his line of sight. Object 704 at G1. Briefly consider chasing him down until I spot the E3 in front of me and continue to move tangentially to him. He misses his shot. Swing around the rock, planning to flank the E3, who is turned towards me. And I get hit by the JPE 100, taking my health down to 15%. I back up behind this rock for hardcover. With bigger threats nearby, I can use this rock for cover and wait for the enemy to get distracted before popping out and shooting them in the flank. I'm more of an annoyance than anything else, but even small distractions can unnerve the enemy. Missed my shot there. I could just get my gun pointed over the rock at this flank, and I get a hit. Not doing a lot of damage, obviously, but I am distracting him, giving him something else to think about other than the targets in front of him. Try to line up the other E3 in the flank. And I get a hit. You'll notice a graphics glitch in the replay with two white boxes in the upper corners of the screen. This has happened to me on a few occasions since the 8.7 patch. Since the damage counter has disappeared, I can only assume it's a glitch with XVM. The graphics glitch will clear up shortly. The other E3 knocked the building down that he was using as cover. Tried to get a flank hit on the other E3, but I missed. As our team begins to surge forward, we're starting to wipe the enemy team out. The enemy E3 was pushing up on me, but uh, backed out of that position and behind the 268. I'm going to try to push up and flank. Still need to be careful. There's an E3 and a JP100 in front of me. But with so many other big tanks, they're unlikely to shoot at me. Unless they're looking for an easy kill. And we knocked down the E3 that had been chasing after me. With the other E3 and the JPE distracted, I'm going to maneuver in and flank on the E3. These guys are all under pretty heavy fire. JP100 gets knocked down by our Foch 155. Missed a shot on the E3's back. Slow down. Staying behind him. Get hit on his rear. He gets damaged by our E50M, and I ram him to death. Lost 11% of my health in that maneuver. The E3 is a lot heavier. Just a T30 remaining. He's at full health. Both of our Foch 155s are closing in on him. I'm going to try to flank behind him. Both Foch's hit him. He's down to 32 hit points. Try to sneak in here and grab that kill, but I'm not able to get there in time, and we win the match.
Looking at the after action screens, I destroyed one tank, damaged eight more for a Confederate medal, hit 23 of 42 shots, did 3,434 points of damage, spotted for 3,795 points of damage, and earned 1,719 experience before the triple. Overall, I started off this match with the intent of sniping the central hill, but changed roles once I noticed that no one was spotting the hill for our tank destroyers. Once getting into position, I found good sniping opportunities at the northeastern gap. While my accuracy wasn't that great, I was shooting at targets that were over 550 meters away so misses are to be expected. My scouting, though, was considered subpar by one of my teammates, who was too far back to hit anything I would have spotted anyway. I kept playing the game my way and didn't push up until I had support and range to assist me. Once the push began, I moved to a good hardcover position to harass and distract the enemy without being overly exposed to their big guns. My impact in this match was pretty clear based on a combined 7,229 points of damage between direct fire and spotting, along with being the top XP earner in the match. Thank you for watching this What I'm Thinking debrief. Stay tuned for more content soon. Ha, ha, ha.